Wetlands are some of my absolute favorite ecosystems, chock full of incredible wildlife and beautiful scenery. In today's video, we'll spend the day exploring the lowland swamps and forests of South Carolina and learning about some of the wild and wonderful organisms that can be found here. These wetlands are a mix of saltwater tidal marsh, brackish water swamp, and maritime forest. The further inland you walk, the fresher the water usually gets, but some organisms have found a way to deal with the salinity of the coastal marshes and are able to thrive here. One of these species is the wood stork, which we found foraging in a small marsh on the outskirts of the preserve. Easy to identify thanks to their featherless heads, long legs, and nearly three foot height, these are among the largest wading birds in the southeast. As you can see, the wood stork has evolved a very unique feeding style that involves seining through the substrate for crustaceans and small fish. Their beak is curved and highly sensitive, able to detect the movements of small prey items and scoop them up with ease. This special hunting strategy allows wood storks to live in the same habitats as other large wading birds without having to compete for the same food resources. This is known as niche partitioning and allows wood storks to fulfill a different ecological role than herons or egrets, which spear larger, free-swimming prey for a living. Speaking of those other species, it didn't take too long for us to spot a flock of great white egrets preening and soaking up some sun in the pond-side vegetation. Great egrets are highly visual hunters, using their incredible eyesight to locate prey in brackish or fresh water. Their coloration helps disguise their silhouette from underwater prey items, and movements while hunting are slow and precise. To dispatch their prey, they pack a wicked sharp beak that is used to skewer unfortunate fish, amphibians, and small reptiles. They can also use this deadly weapon as a comb for their feathers, keeping themselves parasite-free and ensuring that their plumage remains in top-notch condition. Preening is an important activity for egrets, as unkempt feathers are less effective at retaining body heat and keeping water and other debris away from the skin. The same thick vegetation and shallow water that makes these lowlands a bird paradise also creates excellent habitat for some of my favorite animals, snakes. With 38 species found throughout the state of South Carolina, and the majority of those living in the coastal plain, the warmth of spring and summer months transform these lowlands into a reptile haven. Among the snakes that call this place home, some are generalists meaning they are able to exploit a variety of ecological niches. We found a perfect example of one such species basking beside the trail on our way to a freshwater pond. Got him. All right. Check it out, guys. Look at this beautiful little snake. This is a black racer snake. Now, you've seen these before on my channel. I've made a video all about this species. This one is really, really calm, but you can see that on the belly, it's jet black. On the top, it's jet black. And only under the chin there, you have this tiny little white beard looking thing. Now that's a really easy way to distinguish these snakes from other species. These are a pretty common snake and they're a very good colonist of many urban areas. So these are seen a lot, they are very fast and they often react very quickly um, to any possible hint of a predator, which means that a lot of times these do surprise people and they can be a little bit scary to people who are inexperienced with snakes. However, this is a completely non-venomous species. They really pose no threat to humans whatsoever. Um, also, as pretty large snakes, they're very important to the ecosystem. So racers prey on all kinds of different, he's looking at my face now, so racers prey on all kinds of different small mammals, lizards, smaller snakes, basically anything that they can grab. They will not hesitate to eat. They're very opportunistic predators. So they help keep lots of prey items in check, but they're also food for lots of different animals. Any bird of prey, or even sometimes like domestic dogs or cats will grab a racer. And so they are just like many other snakes, um, make up that middle layer of the ecosystem. So they're keeping lots of animals in check 
while also providing food for lots of predators. But they're so pretty. I just really love these snakes. Other snakes are more specialized for the watery world of the lowlands and live semi-aquatic lives. This beautiful banded water snake is a great example of one of these water-adapted species. Wow. Hey, buddy. That is a gorgeous Nerodia. Hey. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Relax. Relax, my friend, relax. Relax, please. Look at that, guys. Beautiful banded water snake. I have not seen, actually, I've just never caught a banded water snake in North or South Carolina before. This is a non-venomous species. Let me get him up on land, actually. This isn't a great filming posture here. Hold on. Hang on, buddy. Look at that underbelly. Ooh, gorgeous, gorgeous. Gorgeous snake. All right. Man, I love that difference of posturing. No, it's okay. Relax, relax. Hang on. Let me get stuff on my tripod really quick. No, it's okay. It's okay. All right, guys. Check out this beautiful water snake right here. Now, this is definitely an adult banded water snake. I really like the colors in this individual, actually. You can see he's really dark, and then he has some brown striping on the side. Most of the individuals I see are way, way uh, lighter in coloration than this. And this guy's underbelly is also just really, really gorgeous. Banded water snakes hunt a variety of aquatic and terrestrial organisms. Everything from frogs to fish to mice to lizards um, is on the menu for a banded water snake like this one. Now, while this species is non-venomous, they do actually have one really neat predatory adaptation. And you can see, that's what a little bite looks like. My fingers there. They do actually have one really neat predatory adaptation, which is anticoagulant in their saliva. Um, so banded water snakes, just like the northern water snakes that we have at home, do possess anticoagulant. You can see when they bite you, it does bleed pretty nicely. But there is absolutely no venom. Um, there's nothing that can seriously damage you if you are bit by one of these snakes. And from an ecological perspective, banded water snakes are critically important because they do transfer energy between terrestrial and aquatic ecosystems. So especially a very large individual like this represents a whole lot of energy, lots of calories, lots of protein, lots of fats for a higher tier consumer like maybe an osprey or an alligator um, or even a great blue heron. So very important middle layer of the ecosystem. Um, they do look intimidating, especially when they do their threat display. But as long as you can, as long as you remember that they have this blocky patterning, you're never going to confuse them with cottonmouths or copperheads. But this individual was really gorgeous. I re really, really excited that we could bring this one up in front of the camera for you, especially because of that dark coloration he has. But he's not very happy with us, so we'll get him right back in the water. Sorry, buddy. While all the animals that we've met in today's video have been interesting and ecologically important, at the end of the day, it's not the birds or the snakes that are the rulers of South Carolina's lowlands. That title belongs to the largest freshwater reptile in the state, the American alligator. With large adults sometimes exceeding 15 feet in length and weighing in at over a thousand pounds, alligators are heavyweight predators. Preying on everything from fish to frogs to deer, they keep populations of a huge variety of species in check and therefore maintain the proper balance of energy in the food chain. Without them, these prey species might grow to unsustainable levels, taking up too many of the food or space resources needed by other animals and leading to biodiversity loss or, in extreme cases, mass die-offs. This makes alligators a keystone species, or a species on which the health of the rest of the ecosystem is dependent. One reason that these apex predators are able to grow so large is their ability to regulate their own heat using very little energy. Just like humans, gators like to keep their body temperature in a certain optimal range, but often do so by sunning or cooling off in the water rather than burning calories like mammals or birds. When they do feed, they waste no energy chasing down prey items, 
and instead will ambush an unsuspecting male from the water. Once they are within striking range, they can chomp down with up to 2,000 pounds per square inch of bite force, enough to crush bone and deal devastating damage to internal organs. Thankfully, alligators rarely attack humans, and most of the time those negative interactions only occur when a person has entered the gator's territory, or the gator has been fed by people and no longer naturally fears them. These are top predators in a keystone species that should be respected, not feared. Well everyone, that's just about it for today's adventure. I hope that you had just as much fun as I did meeting some of the amazing animals that live in South Carolina's wetland ecosystems. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like, and consider subscribing to my channel for new wildlife content coming on Saturday mornings. Thanks for exploring with me today, and until next time, stay safe and keep adventuring everywhere. This has been Zeno, of The Wild Report, signing out.